Okay, here we are with Vivi Malaksos. Welcome to a conversation with Vasily Vivi. Now, you're born in Egypt in Port Said in 1949. Uh, Dad, Yanni, is from Castellorizo. Mom, Maria, is from Nisidos. You have uh, older siblings, Nick and Diana. Um, now, Vivi is not your real name, it's actually Vageli. So, tell us, how did Vivi come from Vageli? Well, being born in Port Said, uh, they spoke plenty of languages in Egypt. And my godmother, Katina. Katina, she spoke plenty of languages. And she, uh, while she used to nurse me, I was very, very lively. And in French, in English they call it vivacious, but in, in French, in, in also in French, it's vive. <laughs> Vevé. So, so we brought out Vevé, and she's, we're in it, when we brought that name Vevé to Australia, it stuck to Vivi. Vivi. <laughs> <laughs> classic. <laughs> it's classic. So you migrated to Australia, you migrated to Australia, um, and you know, you're renting in Surrey Hills as a family for 10 years, and you, you go to Crown Street Primary School. You know, your family experiences the tragedy of the passing of your father, right? You're only 11 years old, you know. Um, how, I mean, the tragedy shapes the rest of your life because it impacts your family. How did it impact your family? Well, uh, starvation. Yeah. Uh, we were very, very poor. Uh, we lived in a... Uh, a Housing Commission? Housing Commission. Uh, in Redfern? In Redfern, which was very, very tough in those days. And... Uh, and you try to help out, you know, with two paper runs. I was morning working, and afternoon. I was yeah, working in the morning at a paper run, and in the afternoon after school I had another uh, paper run. To help out? To help mum, yeah. Because mm. I didn't have a father. Yeah. 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 And you go to Cleveland Street Boys High School, and you don't last long there. No, I don't last long there. <laughs> yeah. I think you're expelled, you're expelled, I think, second year. In my second year, yeah. And you're very, very lucky because even though you're expelled, you don't get your intermediate, you can't get your intermediate, but they do you a favour, they do, they do you a favour. What happens? Well, we used to have a headmaster called Mr Bradley, mm -hmm. and uh, he felt sorry for me, knowing my situation with my dad, mm -hmm. uh, and he he wanted me to learn a trade. He said to me, the only way you can get a, get a trade is you have to have certain uh, passes uh, to get an intermediate. So he was, he was a gentleman, and he turned around and he said, I'll give you three passes so you can go and get a trade. Wow. And he, he did that, he kept to his word, so uh, I got a trade and I started an electrical uh, course at Tech and I did that. After that, once I started that, after three years working there, I wasn't making enough money. I know, because the apprentices were making, you were saying, like six pounds. Six pounds a week. And the labourer was making 12 pounds. So you'd, exactly. you, you'd prefer to sort of be a labourer and get the double exactly. pay. That was the reason. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, that's so ironic, you know, that the apprentice was getting much less than the labourer. Exactly. You know, yeah. and this and this is all to help mum. Exactly. Right. So now, tell us, right, from electrical, being an electrician, drumming. Okay. So, you know, your 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 cousin George Malaxos is a drummer. Yep. Tell us how did he get you involved in drumming? Well, I used to go to his place, being first cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, we. Um, he used to sit down there and he used to play with his band, practice with his um, uh, accordion player and his uh, guitarist. And I'd, I'd sit down there and listen to him. And I got a little bit uh, itchy, as they say. And uh, I'd say to George, George, can I uh, sit down and you can teach me a few little tricks of the trade, you know? And uh, he said, uh, why not, but you've got to uh, listen to me. Because you knew that I was a little bit cheeky, and uh, so he said, "No, he said if you don't, he says I'm going to keep you know wrapping your hands with a drumstick on your knuckles if you don't listen to me," which he did. But anyway, cut a long story short, 
It took about three months, six months. He took me, he used to take me to the venues he was playing at, and I'd sit down there and look at him playing. And uh, sooner or later, he'd be getting me on stage. Yeah, he'd watch on stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then the audience was saying, Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Even his, his band, like his guitarist, and his, they uh, didn't mind me getting up and playing a few songs. And that's how it all started uh, the ball rolling, pulling. Right, so you go through a number of bands like the Blue Stars. Blue Stars. Okay, which consisted of who was in the Blue Stars? Well, it was Terry Nicolau, Nick Nicolau, uh, was uh, George Segolas, the late George Segolas. Uh, there was me, and that was the four of us. And that was the Blue Stars. And you used to play in... At the Merlin Community, Merlin Community, Community Hall, I think it's called. Yep. Yes. Uh, down in Newtown, we started down there, and we gather all the um, all the uh, Egyptians, Greeks from Egypt, and they'd uh, they'd all come in there playing Latin American cha chas, mambos, uh, all rock and roll, and the rest of it. But you said you said you said also said to me how important the Music Lovers Association was in being a network for all the musos. Like you got to meet. And you know, hey, there's a vacancy here, there's a vacancy there. So, is that what the music lovers was all about? That's what exactly what it was all about. Everybody used to come in there, uh, coming from Egypt, though virtually my age or older than me or some younger than me, and they'd get into playing guitars and drums, and one was playing saxophone, and we'd all get in there and have a bit of a jam session. And, what, and then at the end, we'd do a breakaway after, let's say, a year or six months later, a breakaway. One would go his way, the other one would go his way, form his own band, another guy would form his own band. I left and formed my own band. Which Nick, was? Which, which was Nick Nicolau, the guitarist. Me and him went down and started working at the Copacabana, like I said. And, now, the Copacabana at the time, Vivi, was such a happening place. It was. Big. It was owned by who at that point? Uh, Abraham Davis. Wow. And it was packed. I mean, the Copacabana was the place to be. It was a nice place. Yeah. And you were there. Yep. We were on stage. You were on stage. Right, and then from the Copacabana, I think you went to the band, the Astor, the Astor, Astor Hotel. And I think you were saying about the lights thing going from twelve o'clock. Let's that, say that was at the bamboo. That's right, the, right. And it went to three o'clock. Yes. At the bamboo, when you were at the bamboo. The bamboo. Right. So you're playing Latin. You're playing everything. Everything. Rock from and Beatles to Bach. Right. But I think it was at the bamboo. Who owned the bamboo? Uh, Ferdy Nimeth. Right. Ferdinand Nimeth. Right. And you played. Uh, while you were there, you were playing with everyone from, you know, John Rolls, Ricky May, Norman uh, Escott, Johnny O'Keefe, the legend. Cole Joy. Cole Joy. Just to name a few. You played Marie with... Venuti. Venuti, right? That's big. Right, so you've got this, you've got this, this, this lifestyle, you know, playing in these restaurants, uh, these hotels, okay, um, and... You know, you've got you play at the Hunter's Lodge, the Fisherman's Lodge, also, which was was owned by George Fisher, George Fisher, I think. And you've got this lifestyle. You're playing in these restaurants, and then you move to the Greeks, the Bouzouk. The Bouzouk. <laughs> how, how did that decision come about? Well, it was all to do with money. Yes. Uh, after I'd done all the um, all the restaurant uh, fields, if you want to call it. Uh, we, um, I um, was coached by George uh, Foot Founders, and he said to me, "Come and make some money, mate." He says, and, uh, "It's about time you made some it's money." It's about time you made some money. He says, "You know what I mean? You're up for it. You're playing well. You're, uh, you, you've done your homework, and you've uh, uh, you're a couple of drummer. You've, yeah, you've ticked every box." He says, "Come and make some real money." And so I said, "Okay." So I went down and went down, down to the Athena, where their drummer was leaving. Uh, and I went down and started playing at the Athena restaurant, uh, Bazooka, uh, in uh, Cleveland Street, corner of Cleveland and Chalmers. Uh, I was there for about a year, and then I left from there and I went to the... Um, Patrice? Yeah, the Patrice, that's yes. right. The Patrice at, in uh, Redfin. 
Oh, wow. So tell me, uh, Vivi, what's the difference performing in, let's say, the Ast or the Bamboo, you know, the, the Hunter's Lodge, and then playing in the Patris, and then playing at the Athena? What's the difference? Money. <laughs> <laughs> Money. That's all. But what about the clientele? What about the clientele? <laughs> Very different. Eh? Crap. Crap. <laughs> but anyway, so so you, you know you you you're there, and then I suppose you bought an, uh, an apartment in Hillsdale. Yes. With and and, and coincidentally, uh, Bill and Jeff and Jeff. Bill. Um, his surname is. Bill. Yeah, Bill. Macris. Macris. And Jeff Scrooges, isn't it? Uh, Scott the Robles. Scott the Robles. They're in the same street. They're in the same street, but it was worked out that way. But yeah. they, they were brand new units. They were all built up in a sort of a little cul-de-sac area. And, you know, ironically, they are your neighbours and musos yes. are the men that will, in the future, become part of the Charmers. That's right. Right, so now the Charles, tell us about the Charles, how that formed. Well, as we were, as I was working, I was still working in the restaurants and then the bazooka and things like that, and Jeff came over because he was right, I was where you're sitting, <laughs> that was his veranda. It's exactly right, <laughs> exactly right, same floor. Same floor. He was on the first floor and I was on the first floor. Calimera Vivi. Exactly. And Bill was down the bottom there. Okay. Yeah. So um, we were sitting there and uh, Jeff came over and says, can I have a talk to you? I said, yeah. So we had a cup of coffee over as we walked across the road. And, um, and he said to me, look, uh, we've got uh, John Tickey's coming up from Melbourne and uh, we need a, a drummer who can play a bit of everything and all that. And uh, so I said to him, he said, because my drummer is not up to it. And I knew the drummer, Angelo Sylvester. Which, you know, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. Yep. So, uh, and I says, well, what are we going to do about Angela? And he says, I'll let me fix that up. So, uh, but things happened. I didn't want to happen. The guy never talked to me for about 10 years. But, uh, you know, it wasn't my fault. But anyway, that's uh, in the past. But the, that left, the, I went to the, the Zorba. Uh, so the Zorba was... Sorry, before we went to the Zorba, we went, we went down to the Salona for the Rovites. Yes. And they were bringing up Ketty Gray. Ketty Gray, right. Superstar back the, then. The best in Greece. Right, at the, the time. The, the Queen of Lake Bull. That's right. They called them. So you backed Ketty Gray. She came, yeah. And uh, we we done a tour with her around uh, Australia. Australia. And uh, the biggest one was in Melbourne, uh, Festival Hall. And we had eight and a half thousand people. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So, right. uh, and, uh, so you come back, and I think, I think um, the Zorba, the Zorba, because I think Zorba was waiting for this tour to finish. Exactly. Mr. Caruana, I think it was. That's right, yeah, Dino. Dino Caruana was waiting for this tour to finish to, to line you guys up. Yep. And um, you are lined up to play in the Zorba, the new restaurant, I think it was a new, newish restaurant, wasn't it, at the time? In yes, yes, it was. Right. Um, so that's you play as the Charmers. Now tell us who gave you your name, the Charmers. The Charmers. Well, while we're backing up John Tickis, in between him, him singing Delilah or whatever he was singing at that time, it's not unusual, because he'd sing more Australian songs, mm -hmm. English songs than Greek yep. at that time yep. of his career. And uh, in between there, he'd uh, he turn around and say to the crowd. What about a great big hand for the... And he... We're all waiting. And he turned around and he said, The Charms. Okay. He called us The Charms. So you were baptised by John Dickies. By John Dickies. <laughs> wow. The Charms. Anyway, we were called The, the Charms for quite a, quite a while. Mm. And then all of a sudden we get a... Which I'm telling you for the first time. We started getting uh, things from Greece, from another band called The Charms in Greece. Ah. Oh. Saying, well, we're going to... Sue you. We, we, we're going to sue you. This is our name. This is our name under copyright. Okay. So we had to sit down there and change it 
to the charmers. Okay, the charmers. Now the charmers, the charmers, there's, there's, there's a whole story here about the charmers, right? Yeah. You cut records. Yes. Right there, and there's a famous uh, record called Castellorizia, which, you know, going back to your Cassie roots. That's right. Right? And there's a story where you went down to Melbourne to play a festival hall and everyone knew the song. Oh, they were singing with us. That's right. Yes. And they were buying them. Buying them. That's right. Buying them. We didn't have enough to sell. Okay. The tape with us. Right, so you cut records and then I think you cut another uh, an LP. For KTEL. For KTEL, which was very big in those days. The, 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 which was like 20 Greek non stop dance. Yeah, 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 party songs. Party songs, right? So yeah. that's something special. And then I think you've got uh, Harry Michaels, Let's Go Greek and Duxy or something that's, like that. No, no, it wasn't it's Harry Michaels' uh, Greek Affair. Oh, Greek Affair. Greek yeah, that's Greek. Saying, that's it. Okay, all right, okay, no worries. <laughs> And so that was John Tickies when he had him on. Now they were uh, against each other. Oh, uh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. And so, so there's, uh, so there's lots of things happening with the Charmers, right? Yeah. Um, and you tour, you play with some of the biggest names to tour Australia. You play with, you know, like Yannis Voyadis, you know, and you and you and you have fond memories of him being an entertainer. Ah, oh, the greatest. In, in what way? He was a. Uh, not only a great singer with a great voice, he was uh, also a super entertainer. Mm. He would, he could read the crowd where most of these guys that come out from Greece, the artists, not that they're bad, but I don't think they read, they, they just, they go at the end, they say, I'm gonna sing that song, that song, that song, that song. But when you read in your crowd, it's mm. like being in a band. You're reading the people as they're dancing. You see people are dancing more so rock and roll or more so Zabetica or more so something. That's what you hit them with. That's right. Yeah. You don't you change don't, it up. You, you don't, don't change, change it. Don't change it, man. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. So you, you play with Barrios. Yes. That is Barrios. You know, like, he is a mega star in Greece. Yep. You know, you, you play with Manos Papadakis, Gans Katevas, you know, Yolaris, yep. you know, Mary Linda, Sotiria Bellu. Yep. Wow. What are these what are these people like towards the backing band? Do they do they have a lot of interaction with you? No, no well, look, some of these artists do bring out their own group Wuzuki players. Okay, that's true. That's they do. Okay. They do. They do bring them out there. So we as the backing, mm -hmm. the guitarist, the organ whoever the drummer the drummer whatever and we sit down there and we get in the back rooms or we they need a rehearsal we go we go in during the day and we do a few songs and do a rehearsal what are you doing there what are you doing there doing there so we get we get that and put it as a package mm -hmm. and we get it all together uh, you know at the end you know, the, the charm is finished in 19 uh, like the finish you go to the Orpheans for a short time because they know you're a great drummer. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a slow retirement for you. Yeah. Um, and then you leave, you leave music altogether. After over 26 years in music, yeah. you turn your back to yeah. music. How hard was it to finish? Not really, because I was sick of it. By then, I just, it just taken, it's like a bad marriage. You don't know when to get out. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, you say, look, something's got to end. You right. know what I mean? It's, okay. you, you just can't take it anymore. You know, it's a... Yeah, and you, you know, you had married early, in the early 70s, Rita. Um, you know, you had three kids, Gary, Nicole and Lisa. Right. You know, by 99, they were, they were teenagers. You know, you missed so much of, of their lives oh. growing up. Yeah. You know, um, so I suppose, re, you know, retiring from music gave you some time. To spend with your family. Yeah, but the problem is there, uh, Vasily, that they've already grown up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And made their lives. Yeah. Okay. Got married, had their own kids, and all that. I missed all that. Wow. Yeah. Th that must hurt. Oh, it does. It does. And that's why I'm, well, not suffering. <laughs> okay. But, yes. you know, that's the wrong word. There's probably another word. For Put it. it there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I, um... yeah. So tell me, um, tell me something. Um, you know, you you were born in Egypt. You were born in Egypt. You came out to Australia at one years old. Um, 
Who's Vivi Malaksos? Like, is he Australian? Is he Greek? Because you're very proud of your Kazi background, right? So, who's Vivi? Well, um, Vivi's a, a guy that wanted to uh, make uh, good of himself, uh, make my family proud, my cousins proud, mm -hmm. um, my friends, mm -hmm. most of all, mm -hmm. proud. And uh, last but not least, myself. Mm -hmm. But you are you Greek? Are you Australian? Are no, you... no, I'm a, I'm Australian. Yep. I'm Australian. I'm born here. One. I came out here one year old. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything else. Yep. Okay. I don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say I'm half and half, but I, you know, I'm lying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Viva Thank you very much for your time. I thank you.